So all the planets in this game have their own sphere of influence, which you can kind of see around the moon there. It's like this faint aura, and then Kerbin has it. And each of the planets have their own sphere of influence. But I bet you've also wondered what the sphere of influence for the sun is. And uh, <laughs> it's way out here. You can't even see the individual planets anymore. You can just see all the junk that you send flying around in space. So what I want to see is how much rocket power it takes to escape this. I feel like it's going to be a lot. But there's only one way to know, and why is it it's nighttime? We build rockets in the daytime, and our rocket here has been good to us, but it's also very small. We'll need a lot more than this. Truth be told, we were able to get pretty good distance going with just a couple of these boosters here. If you remember the very first video I did of this game, so we could probably just stack a ton of these in a line, each with their own radial decouplers, making sure they don't collide. And people are wondering why I only use, like, one set of decouplers on here well it's because they don't really like tying themselves to two see they're not even connected to anything and at this point we're pretty much just gonna have a growing tower of boosters because really that's all we need to make this work i think we'll be able to save on a ton of weight as well as just have oh my gosh what is happening here as well as just have an enormous amount of thrust with one lucky kerbin to make the journey who's that gonna be it's gonna be bob good job bob i guess he survived that dress adventure after all this actually doesn't seem too bad all we need are a ton of nose cones for these things and I mean a lot of nose cones and then maybe some little separatrons to help these things fly away better because they worked so good before and now that our rocket is properly peppered with separatrons we have to tie all of this down thankfully that is very easy to do and there definitely won't be anything catastrophic that happens if I tell myself this now it's probably going to come true later also the symmetry mode is a lifesaver I'm pretty sure everybody knows this but I'm saying it anyway okay I think I think that's enough struts to go around and uh just to be safe there's gonna be a lot of these on pretty much every corner because i do not want this thing wiggling itself apart on the launch pad also oh no all the separatrons grouped together ah be right back a few minutes later okay that was about 10 minutes of tediousness but everything should be good to go okay it's looking really stable right now. I have no idea how much control this is going to have, but that shouldn't matter because we're just going straight away. And so we burn. Oh my gosh, that is heavy. It is taking so much to get this off the ground, but we're starting to accelerate. So that's a good sign. And these medium boosters should burn for a good while, but man, oh man, that is slow. We also accidentally kind of made the biohazard symbol. So that should be a good sign. The first stage is already halfway through and we're not even out of the first First layer of the atmosphere. Wow. I wonder if I can at least get past one of the planets using this janky setup. Like if we could get out to dress, I think that'd be a good sign. And now the first stage is almost done. All right. So we separate and then they all fly away. Ooh, I like that. And then we burn some more. Oh, that, that is satisfying right there. And that is getting us a lot better accelerate. Well, actually, no, the acceleration is pretty slow right now, but we're still getting a lot of altitude, so we're just pushing this up and out. We should be getting a lot more acceleration. Whoa, hold up, hold up. Okay, you need to you need to stop twisting there, buddy. Okay, come back around. Burn prograde. There we go. As I was going to say, we should be getting a lot more acceleration once we leave atmosphere because there's a lot less drag. And yeah, that is going up a little bit faster. The rocket is also slowly spinning back and forth. Not sure what's causing that, but also the acceleration is a lot slower than I wish it was. But we'll see how it goes. So we separate this one. Those fly away beautifully. And then we burn some more. And whoa, whoa, a little bit of shuddering there. And that's getting a lot more acceleration. How does it look on the here? Okay. <laughs> wow. We're not even pushing out of the, you know, Kerbin orbit here. I guess it would be easier if I started to do like an orbit burn over at the apoapsis. But I was able to do this before by just pushing straight out. So I wouldn't think it'd be too much different. These are bigger boosters after all. Okay. Getting a lot more speed now. That's good. And this is also me doing this without any tilting. So I'm not getting any orbit assist. Distance, which I'm sure is upsetting a lot of you. But now we're on to the last stage. Oh, I love the, how well those separatrons work. It's beautiful. But we'll just push this way as much as we can and see where that gets us. All right, so that is the last booster with some pretty interesting results. But the big takeaway from this is we do not have enough energy to get out of here. So I think the biggest thing that was holding it back was the weight. So is there a lighter fuel that we could use? These methylox tanks are really heavy. Wow. 
36 tons on that one. Uh, how's the hydrogen? That's relatively light compared to all of the other things. Let's see, a large tank of this size is nine tons and a large tank of similar size is, wow, 81. And each of these medium boosters are, what? 144 tons? I had no idea. So if there are some good hydrogen thrusters, then I think we can replace a lot of these with that. Just have a whole bunch of these once we get into space. So then what do we replace on here? I'm thinking the first stage can stay, but we'll need to replace a lot of these middle ones. Strip this off of the main command pod. Maybe just... <laughs> Maybe we can use this. That is so weird, but how heavy is that? 56, even one of these is lighter than one of the boosters. That's ridiculous to think about, but hey, why not? Let's just send a gumball into space. The aerodynamics are really not gonna like this, but we are gonna need a docking port on the bottom here and then an adapter going from here to here. Oh my goodness, this is, this is probably, I don't know how else is gonna go. What's the engineer's report say? This thing is, 2400 tons but it still has a good thrust to weight ratio so it will leave the launch pad and everything else should be the same with the subtle addition of a gigantic gumball so let's do it oh my gosh <laughs> it is really struggling and that thing is wobbly this is where rocket science meets mad science and it is so wobbly but it's still going straight up but it is fighting for dear life to stay on a good trajectory like just look at it right now it's circling around the prograde point because that's the path it's doing i have to look for straight up yep <laughs> Oh, poor Bob. Although we also pretty much like tripled our Delta V, so that's a good thing. Okay, we passed 7,000 feet. I'm really scared about tilting this thing, so I'm probably not going to. Like it's bad enough this thing is just trying to stay straight up doing its own thing, okay? And then we separate. Those all fly away beautifully. And then we keep going and still go straight up. I hope you do. It's really cool seeing those things fly away. It's almost like synchronized swimming, but rockets. And this thing should be wobbling a lot less now that there's a lot less air resistance. And now we are, whoa, oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, don't go radial. Oh, okay, the switch point is right here. I keep forgetting about that, but now we can burn prograde. Our apoapsis is about to leave the range of this meter here. There we go, and then we'll burn the rest of this. And oh gosh, it's still wobbling. We're actually doing pretty good, so that's done. But before we split off, well, I guess we are almost to the apoapsis, so we could still burn and decouple. And then once we get right around there, I probably should have put a reaction wheel on here. I'm trying to control a lot of weight right now, but we're getting real close to apoapsis, so let's start burning again. And now there's next to no wobble oh i take back i take back what i said okay and then we'll lock here as best we can oh gosh it's doing a whole lot trying to stay in a straight line but now we're pushing out oh man there's a lot of wobbling happening right now it's hard to tell going off of this because the back of here is straight but it's the command pod that's wobbling so much hopefully bob isn't getting sick but this is still pushing out pretty nicely even if it's not the most optimal because we're barely burning prograde but now i can start to hopefully rock our rocket that way okay that's done oh Oh gosh, okay, separate, and this is a lot of weight. Okay, we're kind of spinning right now. We're doing a spin move, but now we should be close enough to burn, so let's burn. Okay, and then he centers himself on prograde, and we're good to go, getting back all the velocity we just lost. And this hydrogen tank has a lot of delta V in it. It is the 2X size, so it makes sense. I just can't believe it. Like, you'd have to strap on like 100 methalox rockets in order to match that. I guess that's why it's reserved for deep space thrusters, but now our trajectory is growing at a very good rate. And there we go, we're out. Okay, we're also going uh, entirely the wrong way here. We're not exactly burning with our trajectory. Um, I guess we're kind of leaving Kerbin behind if we do this. <laughs> our apoapsis was over here, but now it's over here. So now we're done with that. Let's decouple it to leave our gumball in peace. And I feel like I don't need to do anything until I get out of the sphere of influence here. And then it's just a matter of waiting until we get to periapsis over here and just keep burning until we push this thing out of the solar system. Them. And also, thankfully, this thing can be controlled. Oh, I just realized I forgot to put uh, solar panels on here. So unless that command pod has solar panels, we don't have a lot of time to control this. In any case, Bob better keep the lights off. So let me go forward a little more and we're getting really close to Moho. Okay, stop. Can we see it? Let's see. The sun's right there. We're going kind of that way. Thing is, I don't even know what Moho looks like except a rock. So 
it might be there, it might not be there. But you know, it's also still that far away. In any case, we're getting really close to the burn point, so I don't want to go too much faster. Okay, so now that we're inside the orbit of Moho, I think we can start the burn. How far away is this thing? I wish I could see. Also, that is a much bigger sun. It is so bright. Maybe we can just turn it so Bob gets blinded. And yep, <laughs> there it is. This is a very quick flash. Okay, this is pretty close. Uh, mm, it's still pretty far away. I can get closer. Just not too fast and stop. Okay. This is pretty good. I can work with this. So then we just burn and forget, I guess. And that's a really slow rate too, relatively speaking. How's that doing the apoapsis for us? Oh man, that's really working to push it out. And our velocity is 16,000 meters a second. That's kind of crazy. And this is going to be burning for a long while too. Although if we look at the maneuver, we can do this forever. And uh, wow, did I just do it already? Hold on. Let's get back in here. The acceleration rate isn't that fast, honestly. And also I have no idea what's happening to the apoapsis there. It's saying minus 2,000 kilometers. Uh, I'm not sure that's how that works. Wouldn't that mean I'm in a planet somewhere? It's just also entirely stopped moving, so I don't know what to believe. So now we're pushing it past Duna. I think I might have found the rocket to get to every single planet in the system and hopefully leave the system if that uh, thing wasn't lying to me. And that is a really cool burn effect too. And I'm sure Bob is having a great time. Also, where is he in there? There he is. I see you in there, Bob. You look like you're having a great time. You know you're leaving everything behind going interstellar. Oh, look at it now. It's past dress and it's still going and we barely used up any of this fuel. I wasn't expecting to have this kind of progress on the second rocket. Oh, now it's past Jewel already and we're past Elu's orbit. We're passing Elu's apoapsis. Where's the sphere of influence? Uh, it's still way out here. I feel like this is just going to start growing really fast. Like, look at how far zoomed out I am and it's still moving across the screen at a pretty good pace and this speed too. We're getting close to 20,000 meters a second. That's got to be like what 20 kilometers a second i don't know oh man it's growing it's growing really big <laughs> oh, oh hold up stop look at that look at that we are leaving the system and we still have 15,000 delta v left bob what have i done are you ready for this you're about to get an express tour of all the planet's orbits so if we just keep this thing pointed prograde i think we can start to do a little spin just to have some fun with it Whee! oh man it's starting to spin pretty fast now okay and then we stop how long does it take to level you out? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's stop for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of control now. Okay, it's starting to slow down again. Oh man, he's getting a lot of negative Gs right there. But now we should be back on track and then keep burning. And oh gosh, it's wobbly again. I think this is just the fate of this now. A wobbly ball. But now we're past 20,000 meters again. 20,000 meters a second. But we're on the last two ticks of our fuel tank now. And we just passed 26,000 meters a second. And now we're at the last thousand delta V in our system. So we're going to be just shy of 30,000 meters a second. That is ridiculous. And now down to the last hundred and... We are done. We are just a tennis ball flying around in space. And Bob is just here for the ride. So we don't really need SAS on anymore unless we want to, I don't know, start this thing spinning. So we can just do one of these numbers. And then once we get some speed on that, we just go boop, turn it off. And then he'll just spin perpetually. But now we can just fast forward this a lot. We're losing all of our speed, but that shouldn't matter because whether the sun likes it or not, we are leaving. I'm out of here. I know we're supposed to be adding like a whole nother system that you can go to, but that's not in yet. Although I feel like, oh, there we go. We just lost communication range. But I feel like if you had to get there, this would be one of the ways to do it. Kermans don't need to eat or sleep, do they? So I guess it is just a little bit past Duna where we lose connection. And now we're gonna go past the orbit of Jewel. Bob's one eyeball is just getting baked out of his skull. And now we're, there, here it is. We're passing the orbit of Elu and there it's gone. Oh my gosh, hold on, hold on. Look at how small the sun is. That's just a pinprick. Wow. And it hasn't even been a year yet. Like, like, not gonna lie, that's one of those things that gives me paranoia is just being stranded in deep space with like no way of getting anywhere. That's what Bob is living right now. You're a lot braver than I am, Bob. But now that we're past the orbit of Elu, where's the edge of the sphere of influence? Well, it's uh, it's way out here. So I think when this game finally does add the extra system and we unlock interstellar travel, everybody's gonna look back on what Bob has done here today as the control to the experiment. Cause uh, <laughs> he is at least 73 years old now. So I think I might just leave Bob here to be, you know, in his own headspace, 
whatever's going on up here until the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. As weird as this little adventure was, thank you very much for watching and sub to intern. And I do want to thank the channel members, including Bread, Dakota C, Mr. Cripple One, Ancient Elixir One, Corby Farm, Destructo Man, Bladed Archer, Donomoto, Devion X, Muffin Stuffer, Lucas S, Ali B, Splatter Sacks, The Real Nickname, Edward, Eyeballus, and Hateful Harold.